that's why we wanted to give some opportunity for us to participate in it. Welcome, Facebook and YouTube viewers. We welcome you in the name of Jesus. Welcome to all of our regular attendees, members, and visitors today. We're glad to have you. Uh, let's give the Lord a round of applause today. Start out with a little bit of a funny. A Sunday school teacher asked her class during the Christmas season, who decreed that all the world should be taxed? Surprised, the Sunday school teacher had a little girl said, the Democrats. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, she wasn't very far from the truth. Because <laughs> that is the truth, my friend. Uh, if, if Joe Biden gets in office, which I pray doesn't, I'm going to tell you, taxes are going up. But I'm just telling you. Uh, you need, to, uh, and let me just say real quickly. I know some people take an issue about politics to pulpit, get over it, Amen. Yeah. I'm going to tell you because that doesn't bother me, and it's it's never going to bother me. And here's why: I'm called to preach the truth, tell the truth, and I'm going to do that, Amen. Yeah. And I'm not going to worry about what popular popularity is. I'm going to worry about what God's pleasing is. And I'm not here to personally gratify you. I'm here to please my heavenly Father. Amen. And I pray you're the same, Amen. Do I care about you? Yes. Do I want you to have the pleasure of God in your life? Yes. But am I out to make personal gratification my goal? And for you, absolutely not. It needs to be our pleasing of God in our lives. Amen and amen. Real quickly, let me just say, the thing that's been on my heart this week, I'm glad we don't live in fear. Uh, Joseph, do we have that for the, uh, C, uh, C, you don't have the C.H. Spurgeon quote? I want to read this to you. Joseph sent this to me last night. Or actually, was it this morning? But he sent it to me, and I want to want to read this to you. And this is what, how many of you have ever heard of a man named Charles Haddon Spurgeon? And if you haven't heard of him, then you're not a scholar or, or student of, of theology or, or bibliology or Christianity, because C.H. Spurgeon is definitely recognized uh, as one of the great uh, commentators and preachers. Here's what he said. Now listen to this. Charles Haddon Spurgeon, during the time of his life, he said, Fear to die? Question mark. Thank God I do not. The cholera may come again next summer. Pray it may not. But if it does, it matters not to me. I will toil and visit the sick by night and by day until I drop. And if it takes me, sudden death is sudden glory. Amen. So let's change that a little bit now, make it for our modern times. Fear to die? Thank God I do not. The coronavirus may come again next summer. I pray it may not. But if it does, it matters not to me. I will toil and I will visit the sick by day and by night until I drop. And if it takes me, sudden death is sudden glory. Amen. You know, how many of us can say an amen? amen? Can you imagine how we can proclaim the divine healing of Almighty God, the great physician, and shut down the church for fear of a virus? Let me just answer the question. We're Christians, right? We believe that God is our healer, right? Doesn't mean we lay our minds aside and don't use uh, reason and logic and, and proper wisdom and, and knowledge. What it simply means is faith is what supersedes that. Can I hear an amen? If people misunderstand my faith as being absolute presumption, it's not. Here's the issue. Fear does not drive my life, nor will it ever drive my life. Amen. And I believe America needs to learn that, and so do our politicians. Right. Can I hear an amen? amen? Open up the country again. Quit killing our people over this. Amen? Right. Let me just say, we do not require a mask here. Thank God. Yes. And by the way, uh, if you want to wear one, you're welcome to. We're not going to put you down for that. 
That's up to you, your personal choice. We don't belittle that. But don't belittle those who decide not to. It's their right to make that choice as well. The last I checked, our Constitution, right? Amen. And furthermore, I am very concerned that there is a, pay attention to this. I believe this with all of my heart. There is a satanic, sinister, systematic agenda at play in our country right now. Amen. I'm going to say this again. There is a satanic, sinister, systematic agenda at play in our country right now. I'll take that one step further. In our world right now by globalists. They are trying to take over and reset the entire world and bring it under a global economy. What's going on in the banking industry with this supposed coin shortage and all the other things? Let me just say it's a farce. I'm just saying to you, there's a lot going on to completely reshape our lives. And I will, for one, refuse to let that happen in my life. Amen. It won't reshape my life. Amen. I still will shake hands. I will still hug necks. I will still visit the sick. I will still preach the gospel. We will still have weddings. We will still have funerals. We will still have church. We will still live life. Can I hear an amen? amen. When only 1% or less of the people are even dying from this, why the hysteria? Can I go ahead and be, I'm, I'm just going to be blunt here. Are we going to start tracking and testing everybody during flu season? And if we did, would we say that, oh, 100 million people have the flu this year, so stay home. How many people had it and nobody even knew it? You know what's creating the hysteria? The testing and the constant hyperbole and sensationalism of it. Stop it. Stop the nonsense. Get your mask off when you're driving in your car down the road. Amen. Act like you got some common sense here and this much. Whatever happened to thinking independently? Amen. I'm not a robot. I'm not a machine. Nope. And I use my brain for something besides a hat rack. Can I hear an amen? amen? And I think it's time for the church to begin to push back and say to our country, we've been given rights and we're going to stand up for them. Amen. Can I hear an amen? If you don't understand what's going on, my friend, you're already deceived. This is deception to the utter degree. I have never in my life ever felt as anguished about what's going on in our country as I do right now. Ever. Um, I'm saying as a man of God, I'm saying as a preacher of the gospel, there is a lot more going on here than what's meeting the eye. And you and I need to understand the sinister, satanic, systematic uh, e efforts that are going on behind the scenes and underneath the current. Um, below, below the surface, there's a lot going on. And it's satanic. It is satanic. It is satanic. And I'm just saying to you, brothers and sisters, this is more than a pandemic. This is a pandemic. Yes, and brothers and sisters, we need to resist because we do not need to lose our rights. Amen. 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 And I will say this. When I go to people's homes, I'll ask them, do you want me to wear a mask before I come in? I'm respectful. I'm going to be respectful. I've said that I don't, don't intend to take the vaccine, and I don't. I don't apologize for saying that. I'm not saying you shouldn't take the vaccine. I'm not saying that you don't have a right to make take the vaccine, but I am saying I am not. And I'm saying this much, brothers and sisters, that I'm trying to be a voice of reason in the midst of this, somebody that's a man of God seeing this from a spiritual lens and warn the people of America for what's going on right now. And I want to do that with every opportunity I have. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, when Japan's suicide rate was 43% higher last month in October, or the, in October, not November, than its national average, but yet they lost, listen, the whole year, less, uh, just over 2,000 people to the coronavirus, but 2,100 and some in the month of October committed suicide. So which one really is killing the people? You better think about that one, my friend. Because when the suicide rates come out in this country, it's going to be phenomenally higher than it ever has been. Brothers and sisters, I'm here not to be a fear monger. I'm here of a faith. I'm a person of faith. And I'm here to say we are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are the light in the darkness. 
and we will not allow the darkness to overcome us. We are in a battle. We're going to talk about that in a little while. And that's why I said the battle belongs to the Lord with that song, Phil Wickham. And at the end, we're going to play one after everybody's off online. I want to play a song. I'm going to see a victory. How about you? Yeah. I'm not a victim. I'm a victor. Let me say something else before I move on to, to the next segment here. The America you and I knew no longer exists. Does that not alarm you? I'm a free enterprise capitalist, uh, capitalistic guy. America has had exceptionalism because it was founded under capitalism and free enterprise. Socialism will destroy this nation. You will own no property. You will not have personal belongings. It will all be owned by the government. You will just get to use it. Friends, I love America. And it's time for us to stand up and say, we're going to fight to keep America. America. Amen. Amen. We've been given a constitutional republic, and if the Apostle Paul was alive today, he would have utilized that freedom. He appealed to Caesar and went all the way to Caesar and gave his head for what he believed. What are you willing to do? And I want to challenge you online. Stop living in the fear. I understand that people are afraid of losing their jobs because of the way this whole thing's. And let me just be honest. It's a messed up system. Oh, you've been around somebody who had coronavirus. You can't come to work for the next 14 days. I understand that affects the bottom line. You've got to take care of your family. You've got to pay the bills. I understand the issues that creates. I, I totally get that. What have we turned into in this country? We do not need to be led as lamb to the slaughter. And I'm just saying to you, brothers and sisters, it's time for reason to come back to the pulpit and people understand. I will not close this church down until summer of 2021. I don't intend to do that. I don't, will not do that. And if I have to crawl to get the church, I'll be here. Amen. Did you hear what I just said? Yes. And if you want to come and find all these people in this church because they're not wearing a mask, then all I can say is I hope you will understand what the media is going to have to deal with you concerning when, that afterwards. Because these are, these are law-abiding citizens of this country except for the mask. And if you want to make a big deal out of that when there's more crimes, more serious to deal with out there, all I can say is you need to get another job. Amen. Can I hear another? Uh, Amen. Can, I'm being bold, but I'm saying what's on my heart. And I pray that we'll shake the entire tree. So, amen. Uh, well, I'm just saying there's some churches that, will, that aren't, have not been open this entire year. Some churches. Some churches are, have told that they're not going to open until sometime next year, and it all depends on how everything goes with the vaccine. And I'm thinking, what? No. If the bars can be open, if the abortion clinics are open, if the marijuana dispensaries are open, if the beer stores can be open, then why in the world can the church of the Lord Jesus Christ not be open? That's my stand, and I'm sticking to it even to the death. Amen. Amen. Can I hear an amen? amen? I've decided, and I've drawn a line in the sand. I know where I stand. Yes, sir. My allegiance is to Christ and not to this satanic regime that's trying to take over our world. Yes, right. And if it takes, if like Romans 12, I mean Romans, Revelation 12, as the song we're going to sing this morning called Overcome, there's one part of the verse, though, it doesn't get said in the song. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. That's right. Amen. Everybody can say they love Jesus as long as nobody's putting a gun to your head. But how many will still say they love Jesus even if they do? My brothers and sisters, Hebrews 11 tells us about people that were sawn asunder. Isaiah cut in half in a hollow log. They were tortured, not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. They wandered about in goat skins and sheep skins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. That's the hall of faith I line up with. And I could care less about the hall of fame. All I care about is the hall of faith. That's right. Amen. Amen. 
All right. Enough said about that. That's got to, I had to say that's been on my heart all week long. And I believe we got a church full of people here that agree. If you agree with, how many of you are willing to stand for Jesus? If it costs you your life, you'll stand for the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and remain standing, please. Some of you getting another exercise there. You just got your quads and all that worked out real good getting up and down. We have spiritual uh, exercise program here. Let's bow our hearts in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we humble and submit ourselves before you. God, we do believe you've given government authority in this world, but we do believe that there is a satanic overtaking of what's going on in our time. Give us the wisdom to discern. Give us the fortitude to stand. Give us the grace to keep the gospel at the forefront and the center of who we are and what we do. Give us favor in the face of sacrifice. Grant to us victory. Grant to us prosperity that we may continue to proclaim and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. We ask, dear Lord, that you would receive glory in this service today. May your people be built up in their most holy faith, and may we go back out in this world. Help us to not live by the sword, for we'll die by the sword, but help us to walk with the sword of the Lord, knowing that it can penetrate and destroy all of Satan's arsenal. Fill us with your word today. Fill us with your spirit. May you be praised and worshiped in this place today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. I'm going to go ahead and have you seat, be seated just a moment. I want to recognize a couple of people. Brother Jerry, would you come on down for a moment, Jerry Ashworth? And uh, I'm going to give these. I'm going to give you and your mom's certificates. Uh, Jerry is uh, just joined the church last week, him and his mom, and we want to make sure that we give them their church membership certificates that certifies they've publicly confessed Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior, and have been received into full membership of the Calvary Missionary Methodist Church. Jerry, we love you, my friend. God Thank bless you. Sir. There's yours and your mom's certificate. <laughs> Vernon Garner is uh, one of our prisoners. He uh, has made a certificate of appreciation awarded to Pastor Curtis Norris. He sent me a, isn't that nice? He made that by hand uh, for his love, service, and dedication to God and the body of Christ on this 15th day of November 2020. And then, guess what else he did? Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? He does that by hand, and look at that. He did that all by hand. And then, so I just wanted to show that off. And he's also written two papers. He's working on the third. We've been doing some theological discussions, and he's asked me to give him some assignments. So the first one I gave him was the deity of Christ, and he did a paper on that. I have that in my possession. And then I asked him to do a, a paper on soteriology, the doctrine of salvation. And he did one on that. And now he's working on pneumatology, which is the, the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. And so he's writing those papers and sending them to me. So we appreciate his work inside the prison. And without having all the Internet access that we have today of our own, he is and he has been writing these papers and he's doing a great job with the biblical analysis. I just want to commend him for that. I want to remind you that there are some devotions for December, January, uh, and February, please pick one of those up if you haven't already. Our cemetery policies are out. Make sure you get one of those so you can know what's going on with that. Also, our Christmas card list, please check your Christmas cards. How many of you are checking your Christmas cards? How many of you have not checked your Christmas card box? The rest of you? <laughs> Obviously, the answer is you that didn't raise your hand on the first one. You might need to check it. It might have that $1,000 check in your card. Now, I'm going to tell you, the reason I say it, somebody last week, Sister Timmer, got a, uh, a card, and it had a gift in it, didn't it, Sister Timmer? So that's why I say, now, some of you are going to go check your Christmas cards before you leave. Now, that just motivated some of you, didn't it? 
And just, just to make the, in, in, the in, make the intensity even greater, I'm not going to tell you how much the gift was. <laughs> oh, come on. All right. <laughs> Don't forget, if last week there was in the bulletin an insert about if you need help with paying your, your assist, uh, energy bills, there is a way to help with that in Harnett County. Please uh, ask if you need information about that. Also, I want to mention, if you need a calendar, please get a wall calendar. If, even if you're visitor day, pick one up on the table on the way out. Use those. In the month of June, there are some memory reminder stickers that you can use for doctor's appointments and all kinds of other things, okay? So please, please get one of those. I want to say a congratulations to Crystal and Chris Burris on the birth of little Cambry Burris. Let's give them a round of applause. Eight pounds. And a little, about, I think, 0 0.08 ounces and 20, almost 21 inches long. Uh, she got, uh, they, she gave natural birth, got stuck in the pelvic canal, but ended up having a little issue, not being able to breathe there at the beginning, but they were able to get her okay, and she's doing good. In the process of the birth, though, it broke one of her, her humerus bones in her arm, but they got that wrapped up. But she's with mama and daddy in the room, and they seem to be thinking everything's going to be good. But she went almost to the complete full-term pregnancy. When you look at the first child, Caden and Cashlin, and it was just like it continued to get better and better. So, and we praise God again for a healthy baby and mama. All righty, and don't forget, ladies, on the Bible study this week, there are some papers on the table. There is a lesson already printed out for you guys, and it's got all the information on the front cover sheet of what's going on with Bible study for the next few weeks and through the month of December, and your Bible study uh, lessons are already printed out for you to do. Did you get one, Sister Gail? Yeah, hold that up for everybody to see. It's like three pages long. So, uh, Sister Judy, I hope you're saying that. That's, that's what I expected. You know, <laughs> that, that'll help out any of the ladies that want a copy of this. Tuesday morning Bible studies, please pick one up and join in and be a part of that. Right, but that's, it's on there. It's on the paperwork. All I'm saying, get one of the paperwork and you'll figure out all of it because it's got all that information. But we want them to participate in the Bible study moving forward. Yes. That's what I'm saying. So, yes, ma'am, you're welcome. And so, uh, so much information. We won't try to make an insert, but it's too much to do that. So we did a brother. We'll appreciate him making these uh, uh, copies. Appreciate it very much. All right. Well, let's stand together. Turn to page 270. Joy to the world. Wait a minute. This is the day the Lord has made. Let's give in our offerings today. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ while fields and floods, rocks, hills and plains repeat the sounding joy repeat the sounding joy repeat repeat the sounding joy no more let sin and sorrow grow nor thorns invest he's going to do this one day because he is. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteous day and wonders of his love and wonders of his love and wonders and wonders of his love. Let's bow our hearts before the Lord as we give thanks. Lord, we're so thankful for the offering. We know that you have been the Jehovah Jireh that has provided it to us. You've given us the life, the strength, the ability to work, to 
move and have our being to earn wages. And we thank you, Lord, as we give back to you the tithe and offering. We ask, God, that you'll take and multiply it, sanctify it, and use it, Lord, to build your kingdom. For Jesus' name's sake, we pray. Amen. Remain standing for the rest of you. We're going to go ahead and go into worship with the praise team. So let's worship God in song. Morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? So just to put you guys' minds at ease. Don't rush back during the sermon to check your cards. I checked every card already this morning. We're good. <laughs> um, but uh, how's everybody really doing this morning? Amazing. Are we ready to praise and worship? Are we ready to praise and worship? You ain't got to sell it to me. You got to sell it to him. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. So um, can I make an announcement for the men's real quick? So I am a poor planner as the conductor of the men's ministry. I do apologize. Um, I'm going to have Gail start taking over my admin. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, so we're not going to have Saturday morning next, this coming Saturday, the 12th. The 19th, we're going to have our men's Christmas dinner. But we're going to do it in the fellowship hall, and we're going to have it catered. We're not going to go to Siler City this year. Okay. Wow. Okay? So now with that being said, I already know what kind of turnout we're going to have. So, yes, ma'am. This coming Tuesday? Mm-hmm. Women's party is this Tuesday night, Fellowship, fellowship Hall, 630. 6.30. Bring Tim a gift. <laughs> I'm going to touch. No. Last thing, I do want to thank my Sunday school class. Uh, they gave me a card this morning for all the, the loss that's gone on in my family. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you guys. I love you guys. And let's praise and worship. Enthusiastically, not. <laughs> Give God all the praise and glory. is able He will never fail He is almighty God Greater than all we seek Greater than all we ask He has done great things Lifted up He defeated the grave Raised to life, our God is able. In His name, we overcome. For the Lord, our God is able. God is with us, God is on our side, He will make a way. Far above all we know, far above all we hope, He has done great things, lifted up. Defeated the grave, raised to life, our God is able. In His name, we overcome. For the Lord, our God is able. God is with us, and He will go before. He will never leave us. He will never leave us. God is for us. He has opened arms. He will never fail us. He will 
never fail us. The God is with us. He will go before. He will never leave us. He will never leave us. The God is for us. He has opened our Feet in the grave, raised to life. Our God is able in His name. We overcome for the Lord. Our God is able. Lift it up. He defeated the grave. Raised to life, our God is able in His name. We overcome for the Lord. Our God is able for the Lord. Our God is able for the Lord. Sound like you wanted to be here. That's awesome. Good job. Let's keep it up. We'll just go right into the next one. No need for me to keep yapping. <laughs> Seated above, enthroned in the Father's love. Destined to die, and poured out for all mankind. God's only Son, perfect and spotless one. And he never sinned, but suffered as if he did. Long before the every victory is yours. Long Jesus. 
Jesus, awesome in power forever, awesome and great is your name. Worthy of honor and glory, worthy of all of our praise, you overcame. Jesus, awesome in power forever, awesome and great is your name. word of our testimony everyone overcome we will overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony everyone overcome victors and we're so thankful that you lead us to victory Lord we praise your holy name Jesus Lord I can just feel your presence right now and I just feel you working among some people in this building right now Lord I just lift up every sorrowful heart right now Lord we lift them up to you show them prove to them which what we already know that we are victors Lord no matter what we're going through no matter what we live our lives to be by ourselves we're failures but with you Lord we're victors Lord we just thank you in your holy precious name Amen Go back to the We Will Overcome slide We will overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony overcome we will overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony everyone overcome Savior worthy of honor and 
worthy of all of our praise. You overcame. Jesus, awesome and power forever. Awesome and great is your name. You overcame. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus. Give him a shout of praise in the house of God. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. He has overcome so we can overcome. Be not overcome, but overcome. Amen. Be not overcome, but overcome. We are more than conquerors to him that loved us. Hallelujah. Go ahead and praise his holy name. Hallelujah. Jesus. There is an unseen battle that we're facing. It has been around for millennia. It began in the garden. It actually began prior to that as Satan was cast to the earth as there was war in heaven. But in the garden, Satan wanted to take over the world. His only hope of doing that was to get Adam and Eve to sin. He accomplished his objective, but yet Satan still thinks that he's the God of this world. But he's not. He's an illegitimate ruler. He does not have the authority he thinks he does. But he's made all of the occupants and the residents of this earth believe that somehow or another they are under his command. And if they are in sin, they indeed are. But they don't have to be. Christ has come to liberate us and to set the captive free. Can I hear an amen? amen. To give us back dominion. If you have your Bibles, you can turn in the Bible. Or if you want to look on the screen, please stand in honor of God's word as we read Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. A final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you'll be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the King James says, the wiles of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in the dark world, this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. So we identify where and who our enemy is. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after you, uh, the battle, you will be standing firm. Uh, stand your ground. Stand your ground. I'm going to say that word again. Stand your ground. Putting on the belt of the media. Political correctness. Put on the belt of truth. truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes put on the peace that comes from the good news, that's the gospel, so that you will be fully prepared. How many of you want to be fully prepared for the battle? Yes, the battle is only going to intensify, brothers and sisters. In addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet. In other words, what's going to guard my mind is I know that Jesus is Lord of my life. He's in control and he's already won the war. And take the sword of the Spirit, our offensive weapon, which is the Word of God. And then I want to add, and I purposely and intentionally add this as the seventh element of the armor, prayer. Because if you have all of the right articles, but you don't have the spiritual power, it's pointless and irrelevant. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Now, that's interesting. That's a Pentecostal idea, isn't it? Amen. No, that's just a New Testament idea. Can I hear an amen? amen? Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Why? Get out of the flesh and enter into the Spirit. Pray until you pray through, as the old country man used to say. Stay alert. And be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Heavenly Father, this is your word. We now receive it. Proclaim it to us. 
Remove every obstacle in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. The ancient Greek for the word of uh, the word for armor is found only one other place in the New Testament. That's in the book of Luke, chapter number eleven, verses twenty-one and twenty-two. Look on the screen with me, if you would. For when a strong man like Satan is fully armed and guards his palace, his possessions are safe until someone even stronger attacks and outpowers him, strips him of his weapons, and carries off his belongings. What is happening around us, my friends, is there is a satanic, systematic, sinister effort to disarm God's people. But I want to say to you, greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. And so if someone greater lives in me than he that's in the world, guess who's going to win the battle? We are. Can you say, I'm a winner? Not a loser. I'm a victor. Not a victim. Let's say it again. Say, I'm a winner. Not a loser. I'm a victor. Not a victim. Now, one more time, okay? I'm a winner. Not a loser. I'm a victor. Not a victim. So get out of that loser and victim mentality. Jesus speaks of the strong man who's fully armed but is stripped of his armor when a stronger one comes in and defeats him. I want to say Jesus Christ is the strong man that's come in and defeated the enemy. We know that Jesus disarmed all principalities and powers. In Colossians 2.15, here's what the Bible says. In this way, he, that's Jesus he's referring to there, disarmed, disarmed. I mean, no, you are not. Uh, don't have to fear a tank if there's no missiles inside, right? Can I hear an amen? Uh, you know, you don't have to fear a man who's holding a gun if he has no bullets. Right? You don't have to fear a lion if he has no teeth. Right? Now, he's got some claws, but he's a whole lot easier to fight without his teeth. Wouldn't you agree? Well, let's declaw him too. And in just a moment, we'll look at 1 Peter chapter 5, and, and not yet. Don't turn there. Just, just hold on. But Satan is an illegitimate lion over the pride of this earth. But Jesus has declawed and performed dental work to take out all of his teeth. He's like the abominable snowman. He's just removed all the trees. You want a couple? That old classic. Come on. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. What did Ephesians six twelve say? We wrestle against the principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in heavenly places, high places. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. <laughs> Do you get it? In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. Jesus has disarmed the enemy. He may have, he, the enemy may have a battalion. He may have a command, but he's disarmed them. Amen. He's shamed them publicly by victory over them on the cross. This armor is of God both in the sense that it is from God, and we can't fight in our own strength. We have to fight in his strength. The very first verse, Ephesians 6.10. As a matter of fact, go back to Ephesians 6.10 there. Final word, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. You cannot do this in Curtis Norris' name. You can't do this in your own name. You cannot do this in Billy Graham's name. You can't do this in anybody's name, but the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. The seven sons of Sceva in the book of Acts when they wanted to cast out demons and the demons cried out and said, we know Paul and we know Jesus, but who are you? We cannot win this battle on our own. We must fight in the power and person of God Almighty. It is from him and that it is actually his armor that we're fighting with. Are you suiting up in his armor or are you suiting up in your own? Are you trying to fight this battle in the world's ideology or are you fighting this battle under God's biblical ideology? 
In Isaiah 59, verse 17, the Bible tells us that God is the one that wears the armor. Look at this. He put on righteousness as his body armor. You think the Apostle Paul might have been referring back to Isaiah when he was thinking of this as Paul sat in the jail cell and he looked at these Roman soldiers and he looked at all the armor and he thought, you know what? I remember reading Isaiah that God had on the armor. He put on righteousness as his body armor and placed the helmet of salvation on his head. Who is the righteous one? Who is our salvation? Matthew 1, 21, and they shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Jesus means Yahweh is salvation. Jesus Christ is the armor. Jesus Christ is the salvation we need to stand up in this evil day. He clothed himself with a robe of vengeance. I don't know about you, but I definitely fear the general and commander-in-chief of this army. Jesus Christ. Because Revelation 1, 7 says, And every eye shall see him, and all the nations of the earth will mourn because of him. Why? Because when he comes back, they're going to go, Oh, no. I don't fear men, but I fear God. With a robe of vengeance, wrapped himself in a cloak of divine passion. What does Revelation 19 tell us? He's coming back and he's had a vesture and, 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 he's, cl and he's clothed with righteousness and he has his name, the Word of God, and he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he ruled the earth with a rod of iron and out of his mouth proceeds a sharp sword and with it he will smite the nations. If you know your Bibles, you know that. We must dress up in Jesus Christ if we are going to adequately be prepared to fight this battle. How many of you are ready to dress up in Jesus? Amen. People say, man, I can't, I can't stand hanging around Preacher Norris because he talks about Jesus all the time. <laughs> if we're talking about football, he brings it back to Jesus. If we're talking about basketball, he brings it back to Jesus. If we're talking about golf, he brings it back to Jesus. If we talk about food, he brings it back to Jesus. If we talk about the laundry, he brings it back to Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, why? Because I'm suited up in Jesus Christ. I can't help myself. The only way we're going to overcome is through him because he is more than a conqueror. I mean, he's made us more than conquerors. Why? Because he is the conqueror. Let me give you an example of this. If a man gets in the ring and fights a battle, he fights the battle, but the one who is his spouse gets to enjoy the loot without the fight. We are the bride of Christ, and he has fought the enemy. He has defeated the enemy, rendered him clawless and toothless, and he has given to us the victory. Can I hear an amen? In Romans 8, verse number 37, the Bible says this, that we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Are you more than a conqueror? Amen. Are you being conquered? No. Or are you conquering? Amen. Have you been overcome? No. Or are you overcoming? Amen. We express the strength we have in God by standing against what? The wiles, the schemes, the strategies of the devil. The only way we can stand against the, the schemes and the strategies of the devil is in the name and in the power and in the person of Jesus Christ. In Isaiah chapter number 54, verse 17, the Bible tells us that in that coming day, and if you'll know that chapter, he's talking about the coming day when Jerusalem will be restored. No weapon turned against you will succeed. But I'm glad to say that before we even get there, we must know that as children of God, no weapon that's formed against us shall succeed. Why? Because God is our Father. He's our promoter. He's our protector. And He's our provider. Amen. You will silence every voice raised up to accuse you. These benefits are enjoyed by the servants of the Lord. That capital, all fours there in the Old Testament, is Yahweh. Amen. Their vindication will come from me. Where's our vindication come from? It doesn't come from the courts. It doesn't come from a voting booth. It doesn't come from man's praise, but it comes from God Almighty Himself. Our vindication is of the Lord Jesus Christ. I, the Lord have spoken. 
John Stott, quoting a man named Simpson, Simpson said this, the tactics, the tactics of intimidation and insinuation alternate in Satan's plan of campaign. You know what Satan wants to do right now to us as Christians? He wants to intimidate us. He wants to insinuate that we've lost. But I just want to say, no, it's already been won. Amen. Amen. Satan plays both the bully and the beguiler. He is the accuser of the brethren. He is the one that wants to downcast our spirits. He is the one that wants to defeat us because John 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Amen. A rich and satisfying life. In Ephesians 6, 12, here's what the Bible says. We are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. The unseen battle is not with the Democrats, although the Democratic Party has been taken over by Satan in America. I said it. I said it in the pulpit. I'll say it again. The Democratic Party has been taken over by Satan. The Democratic Party of old is dead. Get out of it now. Get out of it now. Amen. I'm telling you, get out of it. It's satanic. That's right. Yeah, nobody wants to be bold enough to say that today, but somebody needs to be. And I'm not saying the Republicans are all righteous, but what I'm saying to you, if anybody can kill a baby and say it's okay, do you think that's godly? No. Then how can you say that it's of the Lord? That's right. You can't. You can't even justify it. Don't even try. That's right. But nobody wants to talk about it. Do you know why? Because it doesn't fit our tradition. Get over your tradition. You'd rather keep your tradition than to honor God's word. That's right. Really? If the Republican Party ever goes away from the platform they stand for now, I will say farewell. To you too and say you're of the devil too. That's right. There is a lot of talk afoot of a third party formation. Yes. How many of you would love to live in a constitutional conservative America? Amen. Can I hear an amen? amen? I'd run on that platform. Wouldn't you love to live where Christianity is recognized as the freedom of religion? And let them, take, let them preach the word and never, never keep them from doing that. That's, right. That's where I want to live. And I'm telling you what's coming to this country is more than what you even know right now. That's right. And if you're not prepared for it, you're going to be caught in all of its casualty. Yes, sir. Against mighty powers in the dark world. Why? Because you're not fighting people. You're fighting a satanic regime. You're fighting a systematic, sinister regime. Yes. And the only way you're going to overcome that is through Jesus Christ, by the Word of God. I just wish that more pulpits would get bold enough to start telling this like it is. Amen. I know it's going to cost me some friendships, it's going to cost me some people, but I'm going to tell you, I love you, but somebody's got to tell you the truth. Amen. We are not called into battle. We're already in the midst of a battle. We're not, you can't decide whether you're going to engage in it or not. You're already in the middle of it. The question you must ask, will I become somebody who is capable of overcoming or will I become a casualty of the circumstance? Will I allow the enemy to defeat me or will I, in the name of Jesus, rise in victory and be a winner through Christ? Right. Amen. That is the question that we must ask. So you're not, you're not being called to step into the fight. Some of you say, well, I'll let Preacher Norris. You know, there's some things I'll say. Some of you will never have the guts to say in public. There's some things, and I'm a, you'll, get on, you'll get behind a Facebook screen and say things, but you won't say it in front of people's faces. But I'm going to tell you something. You know what I call those people? Digital cowards. That's what they are, digital cowards. But it's time that we start telling people the truth. And I, and I believe if people like this would stand up and preach and tell the truth like this, the American people would be drawn to that. I believe the majority of Americans want that kind of stuff in America, right? Yes, yes. Are you tired of all that junk out there? Yes, we are. We are not called into battle. We're already in the midst of it. And if you're sitting on a church pew, you've already aligned yourself with it, whether you know it or not. The question is, are you just going to sit on the pew and sit soaking sour until the Savior comes? Or are you going to rise up and stand for the Savior and be willing to give your life for Him? In 2 Corinthians chapter number 10, 
verses 3 through 5, here's what the Bible says. We are human, but we don't wage war as humans do. In other words, you can't fight this with an AR-15. You can't fight this with a sword. A sword in the Old Testament uh, and the New Testament would be sort of like, okay, I've got my guns, okay? We, but we, Because <laughs> they didn't have those back then, right? But we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons. When Jesus was in the garden, they were going to arrest him. His time had come. There's going to come a time where the Antichrist will come on the scene. There will come a time when people will be beheaded for Christ. There will come a time when there will be a satan, satanic, uh, systematic, sinister overcoming of this world, a global agenda that's going to try to come to take place. But I've got good news. I've got good news. He's already won the war. He's going to let them think that they're going to be overcoming, but then he's going to show out. And show up. Amen. Yes, we use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning. Get into the Word of God. Begin to quote the Word of God. Quote the Word of God. Live the Word of God. Speak the Word of God. Amen. Amen. To knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. False arguments. I'm going to ask you, have you, seen, have you heard of any falsehood in political yes. circles lately? Any? Man alive. It's falsehood out here. Falsehood is so well established and truth is so obscure that if you're going to find the truth, you're going to have to search for it with all your heart. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. Let me tell you something, parents. Your children, your children are right now being pied piped into a regime. And if you do not teach them Jesus Christ, they will become a casualty. I'm telling you. Our young minds that are out in these streets, the reason they're acting the way they are is because they've already been overcome by that agenda. And your universities and your public schools are helping them do it yes, because they're a godless regime. I'm not saying all the teachers and principals, that, I'm just saying the system in America, the public school system and the university system is indoctrinating our children with evolutionary godless humanistic philosophy. Yes. And we've got to get that back. And if you don't teach your children, somebody else will. And God gave you the right and the responsibility to teach your children the truth. Amen. That's right. In China, the government is God. In Russia, government's God. In Venezuela, Hugo Chavez wanted government to be God. And look what's happened to Venezuela. Imploding. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. That's why when I'm watching television, pay attention. My boys will tell you, Dad, we can't watch anything. I analyze the commercials. I analyze because I see the innuendo. I see the godless humanism. I see all of this philosophy of the world. I said, that is evolutionary. That is homosexual. That's an innuendo right there. Why? Because when you are alive in the Word, when you're alive in the Spirit, you're going to see and capture things that the average person doesn't get, in, get subliminally. Are you understanding what I'm saying to you? Because there's a firewall. There's an ant spiritual antivirus there that captures that. says, no. And when you hear these politicians talk, you go, because it grieves your spirit. You look in their eyes and say, like Governor Whitmer in Michigan. You're not looking at that woman's eyes and she's full, she's full of the devil. You can look in her eyes and see she's full of the devil. And I know I'm, I'm saying something. Oh, I can't believe you said that. But I said it anyway. You look in a woman's eyes, she's full of the devil. If you don't believe me, just listen to the way she talks. Her language will evidence that fact. Now, we, yeah, we destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God, and we capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. Amen. This is a war we're in. This is not games. This is not fiddle-faddle. This is not twinkle your toes. This is the Word of God. This is truth. This is a battle, and we're in a war. And we're not just here so we can sit, soak, and sour. And by the way, I don't know about you, but we're not here to self-preserve either. We're not here to just make life easy on ourselves until the pandemic's over with. We've got to live every day. Yes. Let me tell you, there are people that have died in the last few weeks, yes. unexpectedly died. Yes. Yes. You may die today. You may die tomorrow. Live to live again. That's right. Amen. The issue is the recognition of the battle. Just because you don't see or understand the battle does not remove its reality. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. That's right. Amen. How many of you can see the television waves in the air? How many of you can see the radio waves? How many of you can see the, uh, the cell tower waves? 
But how many of you know they're real? How do you know that? Because all you got to do is be tuned into the right station to pick up the, the signal on the other end of the television. All you got to do is open your phone and dial a number, and, there, and it's amazing how I can call Adam and I can hear his voice on the other end. I'm thinking, how did his voice travel from over there through the air and get to me and sound just like him? <laughs> Unless there's an impersonator that's doing a real good job. I mean, it's amazing, isn't it? So although I can't see those things, they exist. Just because we can't see God, just because we can't see Satan, just because we can't see the spiritual realm does not mean it doesn't exist because what's more real than what you see is what you cannot see. So what I'm saying is what's happening in America, and you better listen to me, what's happening in the Democratic Party and the Globalists and even trying to make his way in the Republican Party right now in America is they're trying to overtake this, to, to bring this whole, to shift America into a globalist economy and a new world order to set up a regime of come overtaking the world. America has always been sovereign as a nation. America has always been capitalistic. America has always been it's the greatest nation in the, history, in the history of the world on the earth, is it not, as far as the agricultural, the economic, uh, and technological advancements? Nobody can match America through in his, throughout history in all of those categories. Nobody. We far outrank them all, but it's because of God's blessing on this nation. And we're about to lose that. The battle is certainly real, my friends. Our dependence upon God's strength and God's power is the paramount issue here. The battle cannot be fought in our own power and strength. Acts 1.8 says this, what? And you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. How many of you want the power of the Holy Spirit in your life? We've got churches today that don't believe in the power of the Holy Spirit anymore. They want to deny His gifts. They want to deny His power. We want to say, we don't believe in shouting around here. We don't believe in saying amen. We want you to be quiet. We want you to hush. This is supposed to be dignified. The preacher's not supposed to spit and stomp and snort and all this other stuff. And, you know, we're supposed to be a dignified, composed, like we're doing some type of a college professor class. Now, there's nothing wrong with good teaching. But I want the anointing of the Holy Spirit more than anything else in my life and in the church. And you'll be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost part of the earth. It doesn't matter whether we're Americans or whether we're uh, South Americans or if we're Canadians or if we're Australians or if we're Chinese or Japanese or Russian. It doesn't matter. What matters are we children of God. Amen. Matthew 28, 18, Jesus said, All power is given to me in heaven and on earth. So I'm going to ask you, where's all power lie then? In Jesus Christ. So now let's identify a few things. In Ephesians 6, 11, we're told that we're to combat and fight against the strategies, the wiles of the devil, his schemes. But in Ephesians 12, it tells us we're fighting against principalities and powers and against the rulers of the darkness of this age. These are unseen forces. Collectively, all of the members of these, this spiritual host represent a wicked satanic regime that is fighting in this world. Let me just say, Satan is not in hell. Sitting on a throne, he never has been, and he never will sit on a throne. That's a cartoon caricature, misconception, misunderstanding. Totally is not true. Satan once abode in the presence of God, Isaiah 14, but he was cast out of the presence of God, cast down to the earth. Where is he at right now? Roaming the earth in the heavenly and the atmosphere, the second heaven. That's where he's at right now. In Revelation 12, he's going to be cast to the earth where he knows he's got to have but a short time. Are you listening to me? He's going to come down to the earth. He's going to then embody the Antichrist. Are you listening to me? He's then going to manifest himself as a global leader that's going to take over the world and resolve all the economic problems, the health issues of, of the world. But it's a lie. It's deception. And what I'm saying to you, what's happening right now is all of that's going on is helping frame and shape all that up right now. And if you don't know that, my friend, we're, we have been so lulled to sleep and so appeased, so easily and pleasured in, in America that we have now gotten complacent and we are now ripe for the pickings. If they can get you to close the church doors, if they can get you to follow their orders no matter what and keep everything locked down to destroy the economy, they're going to win. I'm still praying that there's going to be... a a rescue from this. Yeah. 
but we're fighting against unseen forces that we cannot see. 2 Corinthians 4.18, it's not on the screen, says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are unseen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are unseen are eternal. Can, can I see the heart beating in your chest right now? No. But your heart is what's vital in keeping you alive. What I see is the facade. What I see is the body. But I don't see the internal components that are keeping it alive. What we cannot see are the components that are keeping life in order and making things exist. And you and I must understand that's the realm we must fight in. Now let's move forward. In Romans 8, 38, we're told these words. And I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. <laughs> can I hear an amen? amen? Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither fears for today or worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. In the King James, he said principalities and powers. Right? Where I'm persuaded neither death, nor life, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's the King James version of it, okay? Ephesians 1, 20 and 21 tells us this. That Christ raised... From the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else. Not only in this world but also in the world to come. Can we give him praise in the house of God? Hallelujah. Praise his name. Colossians 1.16 says this. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. So Jesus is the one that created all of this. So if he's the creator, guess what that means? He's the master of it. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. I got good news. We do have a president, and his name is Jesus Christ. And he can't be voted in, can't be voted out, won't be impeached, and you can't outlive him and can't live without him, praise God. Amen. Everything was created through him and for him. So got good news on this too. No matter what men may say, God is still in charge. Satan is not an equal to God. He never has been, nor will he ever be. God has no rival and he has no equal. He exceeds all things, he precedes all things, and he succeeds all things. Oh, come on. I said he precedes all things, he succeeds all things, and he exceeds all things. He's the gem from the glory land. He's joy's deepest tie. He's purity's widest peak. Can I hear an amen? Amen. He's the leader of the legislators. He's the overseer of the overcomers. Oh, God. oh glory to God. Yes, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10, the Bible says this. God's purpose in all this was to use the church. <laughs> oh, somebody ought to say, Woo, that's why we need to stay open right there. God's purpose in all this was to use the church to display his wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. I am a threat to the devil. I am a threat to the satanic regime. You know why he wants to shut down the church? You know why he wants to shut down Christianity? Because it's Christianity that's Satan's regime's greatest threat. Amen. Amen. This was his eternal plan which he carried out through Jesus Christ our Lord. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 24, we understand that the principalities and powers have an end. After that, the end will come when he will turn the kingdom over to God the Father, having destroyed every ruler and authority and power. Make it make you want to sit up a little straighter, hold your head a little bit higher. So I'm a child of God. I'm washed in the blood. 
I'm not Republican or Democrat. I'm born again, washed in the blood. Can I hear an amen? I'm a child of God. Amen. Oh, I'm not caught up in the satanic, sinister, systematic regime of this world. I may be in the world, but I'm not of it. I may be a sojourner in a strange land, but I'm a green card carrying citizen of another country, and I'm not home yet, but one day he's coming, and I'm going home. Amen. And he's coming back to get me. God may be allowing the work of the enemy right now, but the good news is they're only allowed under his command. but they are not beyond his control. <laughs> they work beneath his command, but they are not beyond his control. And I want to tell Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, and I want to say to even Donald Trump, I want to say to the Republicans, Democrats, Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, or anybody else out there, you make Bill Gates, the Pope, I want to say to Prince Charles, Al Gore, and all you guys out there, I don't care how much money you got, I don't care how much power you think you have, you have nothing. Jesus Christ has it all. In Colossians chapter number 2, verse 15, the Bible says, In this way he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authority, he shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. In 1 Corinthians 15, 57, we're told, Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. He defeated death, and if he defeated death, he can defeat a virus. If he defeated death, he's defeated Satan. If he defeated death, he's defeated sin. So Satan, sin, sickness, sorrow, and suffering, let me introduce you to the Savior. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, somebody ought to praise God in the house of God today. Somebody ought to praise God in the house of God today. Somebody ought to praise God. I know the Savior. He's defeated Satan, sin, sickness, sorrow, suffering, and even shame in my life. Oh, somebody ought to give him some praise in the house of God today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Woo, I feel his Holy Spirit right now. We have victory, victory, victory. I'm not a victim and I won't play like a victim. I'm a victor. I'm a winner. I'm a child of the king. I belong to the Savior. Satan, sin, sickness, sorrow, suffering, and shame have no authority over me anymore. I'm a child of God. Woo! Oh, do you feel that victory today? Claim it! Claim it! Claim it, 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 claim it today. Ah! You may take this book out of my hands and you'll die. I'll die you trying. But I'm going to tell you something. You'll never take this out of my heart. In his name, to his name, and at his name, every knee is going to bow, the white knee. The black knee, the Democrat knee, the Republican knee, oh, the Russian knee, the Chinese knee, the Japanese knee, the South American knee, the Canadian knee, the American knee, the Central American knee, and even wounded knee. Oh, come on, everybody, every knee is going to bow, and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Give him praise in the house of God. There is an unseen battle, but we are the victors. We are not the victims. We are winners, not the loser. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Woo, I feel freedom in this place this morning. 2 Corinthians 3.17 says, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And it says in the New Testament, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And it is for freedom he set us free, Galatians 5.1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty where the Christ has made us free. It is for freedom he set us free. You can lock me up in a prison. You can throw away the key. You can deprive me of the food I eat. And you can even bind my hands and feet. But if I know Jesus Christ, I'm a free man. You cannot bind up what God has set free. You will never be able to enslave me again to that. Why? Because I have been emancipated and I have been exonerated. And my record has been expunged. 
Yeah, I don't know. Man, I, mean, I feel sorry for some people. You know what I'm saying? Where's your joy? That joy means it's from the inside out, not the outside in. Happiness has to do with things happening on the outside, trying to affect how you feel on the inside. But joy says, no matter what's going on on the outside, I know what I am on the inside because I've been redeemed. Therefore, I can joy. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Knowing this is the trying of your faith works patience, James 1, 3, and verse 4. Let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, lacking in nothing. Hold on. My goodness. This, whew. Ah, praise God. Give us a second wind, Jesus. Whew, blow on us. The warfare we're fighting in is, is spiritual. It's not, it is not carnal. It's, in other words, it's not human in nature. We're not fighting people. We're fighting an evil regime. Let me just say something. You women out there, if you've got a husband at home that's being contrary, don't start fighting him with your words. You're going to find yourself making a big battle. Start praying. Start asking God to begin to un, un, undo the enemy's works. Can I hear an amen? amen? God can do more with him and you can in a second what you try to do in a lifetime. If you've got a woman at home, guys, that you're having issues, that you have, don't you start trying to make her right either because you know what? You can't even get yourself straight. Come on now. Anybody, amen. And the women said, amen, brother, amen. He can't, he can't even handle himself. He can't even do his own laundry. He can't even do I mean, bless his heart. If you start fighting in the spirit, let me tell you something. That God can do more for her than you could ever do. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And when you become like Jesus and she becomes like Jesus, guess what happens? You start coming closer together. Oh, come on. Anybody want to say a hallelujah? That's exactly right. And then you become one in him. Do you see that? Hallelujah. In Ephesians 6, 13, hold on. We got to just, we're almost finished here. Wait, it'll be just a moment. We're almost done. Ephesians 6, 13 says, therefore, we must put on every piece of God's armor. So what do we need to do? We need to properly prepare and respond. Let me tell you, if we're going to win in this unseen battle, we're going to have to properly re prepare and we're going to have to properly respond. We must properly prepare, we must properly respond. You cannot properly prepare by just listening to the television networks. You cannot properly prepare by just picking up your Bible every once in a while. You and I must daily prepare. How many of you get dressed every day? Well, I'm glad to know that, thank God. <laughs> Said, well, it all depends on if I leave the house or not. Oh, come on. How many of you, when somebody comes over, you run and say, oh, I've got to get dressed, i got to get dressed, i got to get dressed. Well, well, well. We won't take that any further. <laughs> but how many of you go out in public? Well, that gets a little weird too sometimes. <laughs> how many of you ever seen some people in public? Mm, 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 they need to go home and get redressed again, you know what I'm saying? That's right. you, know what, you know what I'm talking about? You ever seen them? Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you see, you can't go out in public and properly present yourself until you're properly attired. You don't go to a wedding unless it's on the beach in Bermuda shorts and a tank top, do you? You, 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 know, you go properly prepared. You don't go to your high school graduation with your flip-flops on and your shorts and your T-shirt. I mean, you got you have your, right, your, your cap and gown, right? What I'm saying, you and I must understand in this war that we're fighting, in this battle we're engaged in, that we're not just called to be a part of, we are already a part of, we've got to dress up right. That's right. And you can't just dress up once a week. <laughs> Some of you try to come to church and, and, and you say, okay, God, just clean all this mess off of me that's been all, my, all week long. And, and preacher, if you don't mind, go ahead and get me suited up so I'm ready to go back out on Monday because I hadn't had a bath, spiritual bath all week long. See, you only have a spiritual bath once a week. You come to church and expect to, for the bath, the dressing, the, the deodorant, and all that to be applied to you in one service. When you ought to come already ready. Showing up suited for battle. Sir, what must I do to serve? Get properly prepared and properly ready to respond. I want to say this much. We've got to take up God's armor. So what? So we can be able to stand. We will not be able to do anything without God's strength. We've got a lot to cover, and I want to come back to this next week because I don't want to rush through it. I'm going to have to. 
Gonna have to because if I try to, I'm, I'm gonna be bringing the whole bell to one cow when he shows up to get fed. <laughs> you know, it's like the country boy said, preacher, and I'm glad you preached real strong and I was the only one that showed up for church, but my goodness, I'm just a country boy. If I go feed my cows and one that shows up, I don't give him the whole bell. I know I'm guilty of giving the whole bail. But God is our refuge and strength. Psalm 46 says that, doesn't it? God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be removed and the mountains be cast into the midst of the sea. Though the earth shakes and though the things get cat catastrophic and cataclysmic, God is our strength. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. In conclusion today, we must stand. We cannot sit. We must stand. We must stand for the truth. And when you've done all to stand, keep standing. We must not bow. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, which the Hebrew we know is Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. They said, we're not going to bend. We're not going to bow. We know you're the king here on earth, but we serve a greater king in heaven. Amen. I want to say to Governor Cooper, I want to say to any president or whoever it may be, whether it be uh, well, this one or that one, I'm going to say, tell you this much. There's only one king that I bow before. And his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. But I am not going to bend. I'm not going to bow. And thank God I'm not going to burn. Amen. All you young people that think serving Jesus is just a religious dress. I just want to say, my, you just don't know him, do you? Is this the greatest journey of my life? There is nothing in all the world that joys my heart like Jesus does. And I can tell you that is a fact. That's not just a statement being made from a pulpit. That is the truth. You know why? Because when I'm a Jesus-loving man, when I go deer hunting and I see those deer, I get to enjoy it because I know who made them. It's not just a killing session. I'm not a killer. I'm a hunter. There's a difference between the two, and I don't hunt with just killers. If they don't eat the meat, don't need to be hunting. Can I hear an amen? Amen. 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 Can I hear an amen? amen? I believe in being a good steward of God's creation. But I want to stand, especially when I know standing is for the right. And even if it costs me something. Some of you are going to have to be making decisions in the near future of where you stand and how you stand because the culture wants you to accept things that were, no, were not acceptable in years past. They're going to tell you that you're a minority now. They're going to tell you that you're no longer the popular vote. They're going to tell you that even churches have now succumbed and you're no longer in the majority. They're going to tell you that you're going to be persecuted if you keep up that belief. They're going to tell you that even laws are going to be passed that are going to prosecute you for believing that way. But the question is, will you stand? Because, you see, the proof is not in your profession. The proof is in your practice. Amen. I'm not going to bend, I'm not going to bow, and I'm not going to allow to be burned by the satanic, sinister, systematic doctrine of our time. I still believe the Bible teaches marriage as one man and one woman. I still believe that the Bible teaches that, that life is in the hands of God and that we should protect the unborn. Amen. I still believe the Bible is the word of God from Genesis to Maps. Amen. I still believe the word of God is without error and, with, and is infallible. I believe the word of God is authoritative and authentic. 
I still believe that Jesus Christ was God who became a man that was born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, died on the cross, was buried, and on the third day resurrected, sent back the Holy Spirit to indwell the believers, and one day he's coming back again, and he's given us a mission to accomplish until he comes. I still believe. I still believe. It's time for the church of Jesus Christ to lay aside all of its denominational walls and understand there's only one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and one word of God. And it's time for us to come together, to stand together, and finish well until Christ comes to get us. Amen. Satan may be trying to fill this world through the means of media, social media, television, radio, with all of his satanic, sinister, systematic theology, but I've got good news. I've already read the book. And I know how the story ends. How about you? Are you ready to stand in this unseen battle? And are you willing to fight in this unseen battle? And are you willing to give your life in this unseen battle? No, my name's not Jim Jones, and I'm not passing out Kool-Aid this morning. What I am saying is this. If they came to me and say, either deny Jesus or die, I'm going to die. I've, I've got to read this. I felt the Holy Spirit prick me to do this. I've got to read this. I've got to read this. Something I want you guys to understand. It's called the 40 wrestlers. Intended to read it next week, but I feel the Holy Spirit promised said do it right now. In 320 AD, Emperor Licinius Centurion Sempronius, some say Nero, this happened under. There was an extermination of Christians, particularly under Nero. He blamed the church for everything. You know what's happening in America right now? They're blaming the church for all the problems in this country. That's There lived and served a band of soldiers, though, however, known as emperors, the emperor's wrestlers. Fine stalwart men they were, picked from the best and the bravest of the land, recruited from the greatest athletes of the Roman amphitheater. And in the great amphitheater, they upheld the arms of the emperor against all challengers. Before each contest, they would stand before the emperor's throne. Then through the courts of Rome would ring the cry, We the wrestlers wrestling for thee, O emperor, to win for thee the victory, and from thee the victor's crown. When the great Roman army was sent to fight in a faraway Gaul, no soldiers were braver or more loyal than the, this band of wrestlers led by their centurion Vespasian. But news reached Nero that the Christian faith that seemed to know no bounds and which seemed to leap all barriers had come among and infiltrated the wrestlers, and many had accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. To be a Christian in this time meant death, even to those who served as Nero's best. So that was, th th this decree was straightforward and dispatched to the centurion Vespasian, quote, if there be any among the soldiers who cling to the faith of the Christian, they must die. The decree was received in the dead of winter. The soldiers were camped on the shore of a frozen inland lake. The winter had been hard, but the many hardships they had endured together had only served to unite them more closely. So it was with sinking heart that Vespasian, the centurion, read the emperor's message. Yet to a soldier there is one word supreme, duty. Vespasian called the soldiers together and asked the question, quote, Are there any among you who cling to the faith of the Christian? If so, let him step forward. Forty wrestlers instantly stepped forward two paces, respectfully saluted and stood at attention. Vespasian paused. He had not expected so many. The decree has come from your emperor, he said, that any who cling to the faith of the Christian must die. For the sake of your country, your comrades, your loved ones, renounce this false faith. Not one of the forty moved. Until sundown, I shall await your answer, said Vespasian. Sundown came. 
Again, the question was asked, Are there any among you who cling to the faith of the Christian? If so, let him step forward. Again, the 40 wrestlers stepped forward and stood to attention. Vespasian pleaded with them long and earnestly without prevail upon a single man to deny his Lord. Finally, he said, The decree of the emperor must be obeyed, but I am not willing that your blood be on your comrades. I am going to order that you march out upon the lake of ice, and I shall leave you there to the mercy of the elements. Fires, however, will be burning on the shore, and at the largest, I, your commander, will be waiting to welcome any willing to renounce this false faith. The 40 wrestlers were stripped, and then without a word, they were wheeled, and falling into columns of four, marched out towards the lake of ice, naked. As they marched, they broke into chorus with the old chant of the arena. Arena, Forty wrestlers wrestling for thee, O Christ, to win for thee the victory, and from thee the victor's crown. All through the long hours of the night, Vespasian the centurion stood by his campfire and waited, and all through the long night came back to him fainter and fainter the wrestler's song. Forty wrestlers wrestling for thee, O Christ, to win for thee the victory, and from thee the victor's crown. As it near, and it's, uh, all through the long hours of the night, Vespasian the centurion stood by his campfire and waited. And as it neared the morning, one figure, overcome by exposure, crept quietly towards the fire. In the extremity of his suffering, he had renounced his Lord. Faintly but clearly, from out of the darkness came the song, Thirty-nine wrestlers wrestling for thee, O Christ, to win for thee the victory, and from thee the victor's crown. Vespasian looked at the figure drawing close to the fire, then looked out into the darkness whence came the song of the faith. Once again he looked, ah, oh, who can say, perhaps he saw the greater light shining from them out on the lake. Perhaps he felt the fire of those men whose faith had not been renounced. Off came Vespasian's helmet. Off came his shield. Off came his shoes and off took he his garments. And he ran out toward the wrestlers and cried out, Forty wrestlers wrestling for thee, O Christ, to win from thee, or for thee the victory and from thee the victor's crown. And once again, the 40 wrestlers were complete. There may come a day when we too face similar circumstances. May I too have the grace that even if naked I must be to be put out on the ice, may I not deny my Lord in the face of grueling suffering. And even if I must die numb and cold on the icy lake of this old sinful world, even with the faintest voice of my cry, may I say, wrestling for thee, O Christ, to win from thee, for thee the victory, and from thee the victor's crown. I want you to bow your heads with me. How many are willing to die for Christ. I'm just going to ask you right now. If you're willing to give your life for Jesus, I don't want you to even hesitate. I just want you to get up, and I want you to make your way forward. Say, I'm willing to give my life for this man named Jesus. I'm willing to give my life for this man named Jesus. You can stand up here in the choir. I'm willing to give my life for this man named Jesus. I'm not a Methodist, I'm not a Baptist, I'm not a Presbyterian. I'm a born-again, blood-washed, spirit-filled, Bible-believing, Scripture-quoting, Bible-toting child of God. That's who I am. Come on, let's, let's, make, let's let them come on in. If you have to, just sort of form in the middle of the pews there and make a... I'm going to tell you something. We're going to die one way someday. And if I'm going to die, I want to die knowing that I've finished well for Jesus. Amen. In the book of Acts, we hear that, uh, are told in Acts 13, 22, that David was a man after God's own heart. But David committed adultery. Some of you have made some blunders and messes in your life. But today, you stand here today by the grace of God. 
Let the rest of your life be the best of your life for the cause of Christ. Finish well. It's not how you start the race. It's how you finish the race. In Acts 13, 36, the Bible leaves on record for us. For David, after having served his own generation by the will of God, died and was laid among his fathers and saw corruption. In other words, David finished well. Brothers and sisters, there's a battle we're fighting. Let's finish well. Heavenly Father, we commit ourselves right now in front of this altar before you. That no matter what the cost may be that lie ahead, give us the grace to stand. May we never cower. May we never bend, bow, or burn. May we not submit to the edicts of the king that calls us to violate what your word says is truth. May we always submit to the king when it doesn't violate your word, but when it violates truth, may we always let your word trump everything else. And God, may we always follow your word. Keep us strong. Help us be focused. Prepare us and help us properly respond to the battle in front of us right now. Help us to know that the people around us are not our enemy. Help us to engage in the spiritual warfare. And in Jesus' name, help us to learn to pray in the Spirit. Help us, God, to learn to walk in the Spirit that will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Help us to see through the Spirit, to hear with the Spirit, think with the Spirit. Lord, to obey in the Spirit. And God, suit us for battle. Put upon us the helmet of salvation. Clasp us together with the belt of truth. Guard our vitals with the blessed breastplate of righteousness. God, I pray we would walk in the shoes of peace, for blessed are the peacemakers, for they should be called the children of God. I pray, dear God, that you'll help us to take up that shield of faith that can take all of those darts that the enemy's shooting at us and help us to know that he's always going to try to flank us and hit us where the, the shield is not. So, God, may we always know where to turn and how to look and be aware of Satan's strategy so we'll know how to intercept the arrows that he's shooting at us. May that shield of faith be great although that faith is simple in trusting you. God, I pray that you'll also help us to take up the word of God, the sword of the Spirit, that we would be able to wield it with authority, with power, with knowledge, with, uh, Lord, with practice and, and, and preparation, and that we'll be able to, Lord, even pierce the enemy and defeat him. And we ask God that you'll help us to finish well. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Now, hold on. Wait a minute. We're going to go offline. For those of you, we're going to play a song as everybody get ready to leave today. Go ahead and go offline if you would back there. We're going to play a video. We can't play it with you online, but I love you. You stand strong for Jesus.